For today's tech tip, I'm going to demonstrate two new workflows of using design layer viewports. For my first example, I'm going to show you how design layer viewports can be used with a large scale project where you would have multiple people working together simultaneously. Here I have a series of files set up based on a building structure. This includes the envelope, which is the shape of the building, structure, which is the bones of each level, mechanical, elevations, and sections. The next set of files are based on the different level plans, the interior partitions of the client build-out. This includes levels 1 through 5. Then I have a set of documents containing different units that are repeated throughout the file. This type of file structure is best if you have several repeating elements. The repeating elements in this case are unit plans. Here I have my second level floor plan open. And if I go to my navigation palette and click on the references tab, you can see that I already have several design layer viewports referencing information from external files. My next step in this file is to create a design layer viewport for unit B. Just as I did before, I'm going to go to View, Create Viewport, click on the Create on Layer drop down box, and select the design layer that I want my design layer viewport to reside on. Next, I'm going to click on the Select Source button, choose External Document, and then select the file that I want to reference information from. Once I select the file, I'm going to click Open, then click OK, and OK again. Here you can see my design layer viewport of Unit B, and I can now position it where I would like it. Based on the Level 2 layout, I'm going to have to rotate my design layer viewport. I could easily do this through the Object Info Palette by typing in a rotation value. Instead, I'm going to use the keyboard shortcuts Command L on a Mac or Control plus L on a PC to rotate my design layer viewport 180 degrees. Now that I have positioned Unit B in the correct space, I need to make duplicate copies of it. First, I'm going to use the Mirror tool to mirror and duplicate a copy of Unit B. Next, I'm going to use the Move tool to precisely move a copy of Unit B. To use the Move tool properly, I'm going to have to access the Move tool preferences and make sure that I have the Retain option checked to retain the existing copy of Unit B. Now that I have positioned all three design layer viewports, I can zoom out and make sure that all three units look correct. If I need to make a change to the Unit B layout, I can simply double click on my design layer viewport to access the Edit Viewport dialog box, select Reference Design Layer, click OK, and this will open the Unit B file. Note that you will get a dialog box indicating that you are about to open a reference document. If no one else in your office is working on this file, go ahead and click Yes. Once the file is open, you can create, change, or move anything you like. For this example, I'm just going to change the fill color of the coffee table to red. Once I have made my changes, I'm going to go to File, Save, and then close the Unit B document. Returning to the Level 2 document, I will not see the referenced information update automatically, but if I go to my navigation palette, I can see that the Unit B reference is highlighted in red, indicating that a change has been made to the file. All I have to do now is right click on the Unit B reference and choose Update to see the changes that have been made. This workflow with design layer viewports allows multiple people to work together on one project and any changes to the plans can easily be updated throughout the whole office.
I also want to note that design layer viewports do contain 3D geometry, work with stack layers, and can also be rendered. Next, I'm going to demonstrate how you can use design layer viewports in a 2D workflow. If you are just working in 2D and you need to redraw your elevation views, you can create a design layer viewport of your floor plan to create a snappable reference to generate your elevations. Here I have a simple 2D plan of an apartment complex and I need to generate elevation plans in my bathroom. To do this, I'm going to create a design layer viewport of my bathroom in plan view. Next, I'm going to use the rectangle tool to define the area that I would like to use as my design layer viewport. With the rectangle selected, I'm going to go to View, Create Viewport. Note that I get a dialog box asking if I would like to use the rectangle as a crop object for my design layer viewport. In this case, yes. Also note that because I am referencing information from my current document, all I have to do is select the design layer that I would like my design layer viewport to reside on, and I do not have to go to the Select Source Options and choose an external document. Once I have created my design layer viewport, I'm going to use the Rotate tool to position my design layer viewport orthogonally. Now by holding down the control key on a PC or option key on a Mac, I'm able to click and drag duplicate copies of my design layer viewport, then use the keyboard shortcut control L on a PC or command L on a Mac to rotate the design layer viewports 90 degrees to easily lay them out. This will allow me to draw guidelines so that I can accurately create my bathroom elevations. I have actually taken the liberty to draw the elevations and by turning on the elevations class in this document you can see the end result. 